Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at Analytics WP. Analytics WP is a WordPress plugin for self hosting your site analytics. And I wanted to give it a try because it's self hosted, because there's an agency option, and because it's attractively priced. This is the Analytics WP website here. If we look at the features, it says accurate, showing journeys, so showing the different pages and clicks that the user took along the way. Self-hosted, has WooCommerce support, and it's available on a lifetime license. If we look at the integrations, we see it has integrations for popular form builders, popular page builders, and e-commerce integrations. Analytics WP has straightforward pricing. One site lifetime license is $99, or unlimited websites for $199 with a lifetime license. And the unlimited package includes the agency dashboard. So what I've done in preparation for this video is that a little over a week ago, I installed Analytics WP on three websites. And now let's go take a look at those sites. So here's the WebTNG website. I'm looking at the last seven days. This is Google Site Kit, and it says there were 451 visitors. Okay, if I go, however, to Analytics WP, it says there were 603 visitors. Okay, pretty big difference between the two. One of the reasons why Google Analytics aren't so accurate is because sometimes people have blockers for tracking scripts. Okay, but Analytics WP just uses a first party cookie. If we look at the menu items here, there's the dashboard, which we'll come back to in a moment. There's live events. I don't think there's anyone actively on the site right this moment. There are integrations. And you can see I have Fluent Forms enabled because I'm using Fluent Forms. There's this feature called Journeys, which I think is probably more useful on sites with a membership or e-commerce sites or maybe a learning management site or some kind of community site because then you would get more information. If we click on one, for instance, here we see, you know, it has a random session ID and you can see that the user first came from Google to look at the article I have on the core framework on the 19th of March and then took a look at the article on the new Oxygen 6.0 and a look at an article on Green Shift, Green Light Element and local styles. Okay, so you can see here they came back. And these, they were here on the 19th. Here they came back in April on the 7th. Let's join those together. So that's kind of what it means by journeys. And as I said, I think it would be a more useful feature if you had a membership type site or e-commerce site. This is where you enter your license. This is the help welcome screen, take you to the help on the website. These are the settings. They're practically none. You can disable tracking for user roles. You can decide which user role has access to Analytics WP dashboard. You can add a question to the WooCommerce checkout form to ask how you learned about the site. You can enable WooCommerce email order notification source section, and you can hide the agency mode explanation page. By default, there's a menu item here for agency mode, but since uh, that's not enabled on the site, I just kind of turned it off. All right, so those are all the settings. Now, if we look at the dashboard, you can choose your date range. You can see unique people, total page views, 
pages per person. And it has this category window shoppers, which is the percentage of people who just look at one page. Then down here, it has popular referrers, where your visitors are coming from, popular pages, and then grouped by device type. And up here, you can filter the data. You can create rules and groups of rules using and or. And you can filter by refer, by page URL, user agent, various UTM parameters, user ID, user email, and device type. Then these are the comparison operators. And this is where you would put your search term. Once you create a query here and apply query so that it's filtered your dashboard data, you can come over to this button and you can save the current filter, give it a name, and you can save it then to reapply it at another time. So in that way, you can kind of save up a little collection of reports that you want to run. This is the standalone experience. If we go to another website, I have this one pager here, and we go into the dashboard to Analytics WP, you see we have the same menu items here, but there are two more. And that's because I've installed the agency plugin add-on here on this site. When you install that, it automatically found sites that are using the same license. Okay, so it's group those together and you can generate a site license on the website. So here, these are the sites that I installed the standalone plugin on. You can give them tags and you can go into report management. We'll look at this just a minute. Here, you know, I said for WebTNG, I'd like a weekly report and I want it sent to my email. And we can preview the report here. We'll see in a minute where this image came from. But then this is the report that's generated. You know, it seems attractive enough. If we do the details, here's where you would assign a tag. You would give it your business name, the logo. This is for the URL that's in the report and the report recipient. And then this is where you can go into the HTML and CSS for the report and you can tweak it. You'll notice that there are these kinds of like magic tag types of tags here that you can use for the data. And then this is the documentation for the syntax or creating reports. Now there's also an agency dashboard. And so here you can see the sites. You know, you can choose a single site that you want to see and can run queries here. So the same kind of thing. But allows you to look at sites either in aggregate or one at a time from a central dashboard. Setting up the individual sites and the agency dashboard feature were very simple. You basically just install the plugin, put in your license key, and everything happens automatically. Okay, so that's the walkthrough portion of the video. So we've done a quick walkthrough now for some discussion. Let's start with the cons. I didn't run into any bugs or issues. But there are some things missing, and the two big ones that I noticed are these. First, I was surprised that there isn't a report that shows you which country your visitors are coming from. I think that's important and pretty standard. The second thing that I expected to see and didn't see is that since this is self-hosted, the natural consideration is going to be about data storage. I expected to see some options for data management. For example, showing you the size of the database tables, the ability to set a retention period, the ability to export your data to a spreadsheet, and the ability to delete data older than a certain date. So those were two things that I thought were missing. 
Now, on the plus side, the first plus is that it's self-hosted. These days, many of us wonder about automatically giving all of our data to Google. And now with privacy laws, using a third-party service is more difficult. There are more hoops to go through. Second, we saw Analytics WP is obviously doing a better job at tracking users than Google does. It's more accurate, so that's another pro. It was extremely easy to install and set up. It's basically just add the plugin, enter your license key, and you're good to go. That was also true of the agency dashboard, and it even automatically found the client sites and added them. With Google Analytics, you have to set up accounts on Google, and you have to give site access to your Google accounts. So being straightforward and simple to set up is nice. The filters and queries seemed easy to use, and you can save your queries to run them again later. And I thought the reports looked attractive. And the final pro, I think, is pricing. That was one of the things that prompted me to take a look at Analytics WP in the first place. You have the single site package, and you have the unlimited site package, and the unlimited package also includes the agency dashboard. As you saw in the video, I have the Google Site Kit plugin installed, and I think it's too soon to move over to Analytics WP, wait for some additional features such as country tracking and data management. So this has been my look at Analytics WP. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you did, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.